to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the lord jesus christ said you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free how wonderful it is to know that a person can know god's truth and that each of us can be free from sin but the question remains how do you know are you sure that you know god's truth and how can you know just as jesus said how can you know that you know the truth Today we're going to look to the Word of God to determine how a person can know he has that truth in his life and that he's right with God. We welcome you to our broadcast and we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of the Word of God together. We encourage you to visit our website at thegospelofchrist.com. You can access all our lessons that we've done as well as a host of good Bible study material. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, you can access our media request page from our website and we'd be happy to send that to you free of charge. Let's think about what does the Bible say about one knowing that he can know the truth and how can I be sure? I want to be sure. When I stand before God's almighty throne and God is on that throne about to give judgment, I want to make sure that I'm right with God. And the Bible says I can know. How can I know that I know the truth? Friend, as we think about this idea today, please understand our goal is not to determine if we can know the truth. You can know the truth. The, crypt, the scripture clearly teaches that. Ephesians 5, 17, Paul said, Do not be ignorant, but understand the will of the Lord. Ephesians 3, verse 4 says, when Paul said, You can understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ when you read. And so we can read and we can know the truth. As we began with, Jesus said, You can know the truth and the truth will make you free. And so we're not asking if you can know truth. You can know it. Uh, also realize our goal is not to determine whether our parents or our family or our friends knew the truth. We're not asking today, did your mama know the truth or did your daddy know the truth or did your uncle or some friend? We're asking, do I know the truth? And here's why this is so important. Romans 14, 12 says, so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. I'm responsible for me. I can only determine whether I know the truth, I know my heart, I know whether I'm right or not in the sight of God as I read and study His Word. And so this is a personal matter. But friend, realize this also. Our goal is not to debate what the truth is today. We are convinced from the Scripture that God's Word already is that truth. Psalm 119 verse 160 the psalmist said, the entirety of your word is truth. We believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that this book, the Bible, is God's truth. Jesus prayed in John 17, verse number 17, to the Father, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Our goal today is to discover from the scriptures how a person can be sure his life is in line with that truth. And so let's begin by thinking about some things that if I'm going to know the truth, first of all, there are some hindrances that I've got to get out of the way that may keep people from knowing that truth. Number one, as we think about hindrances that need to be removed before I can know the truth, the first hindrance is this, believing and practicing what other people tell you will hinder you 
from knowing the Scripture. Now, friend, I'm not saying that somebody can't point you in the right direction, that somebody couldn't show you a script. That's not what we're saying. But just blindly accepting what somebody says is from God without checking it for yourself, believing and practicing what men tell you without checking it in the Bible, that's a big hindrance that has affected millions of people through the span of time. You see, throughout Scripture... God warns us not to put our faith in men and what they tell us. Exodus 23 verse 2, God said, In the long ago, do not follow a multitude to do evil. Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14, Jesus taught us that wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there are who are going down that path just because somebody else believes it. Just because somebody stands up maybe behind a pulpit, maybe even holds a Bible and says, this is what God wants you to do to be right with Him. Friend, we encourage you today, don't just believe that person. Check it for yourself in the Bible. Don't just take what somebody else has told you, whether it be a parent, or whether it be a friend, whether it be some religious person. Don't take what other people tell you to be the truth without first checking it for yourself. Imagine the multitudes who have been led astray by false teachers today. Somebody stands up and says, let me give you an example. Somebody, maybe in a religious setting, stands up and says, to be saved, all you've got to do is say the sinner's prayer. And millions of people have blindly accepted that. Did you know that the sinner's prayer isn't even found one time in the Bible. Now, friend, that's amazing. They'll say something like, Dear Lord Jesus, I now accept you as my Savior. I ask you to come into my heart and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Where's that at in the Bible? Friend, you can search your Bible from the first verse of Genesis 1 to the last verse of Revelation 22, and you won't find it one time. That kind of mentality of not checking for yourself has hindered a lot of people from knowing God's truth. And so don't let believing and practicing what others tell you to do hinder you from knowing the truth. Secondly, don't let human tradition and personal bias hinder you from knowing God's truth. I want to give you an example of this from Matthew chapter 15. There was a group of Jews in Jesus' day known as the Pharisees. And they were great at their tradition. They had a lot of bias and prejudice. And yet Jesus clearly identified this was keeping them from knowing God's truth. Matthew 15, beginning in verse number 7, Jesus said, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you say, these people draw near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why? In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. You know, when you think about these people, they had a lot of various traditions. You had to wash pictures in a certain way. You had to wash up to the elbow. You had to clean things in the right customary way. And they had all these laws and traditions they had made up. And if you didn't follow that, you weren't right in their sight. They were biased and they let human tradition get in the way. Friend, we beg you today. One of the things that will keep more people from knowing the truth is human tradition and personal bias. Why do we do the things we do? Sometimes we say, well, that's just the way we've always done it. Friend, the old saying, that's the way we've always done it, may not work on the judgment day. We want to make sure that just because it's tradition and just because that's what we like, we want to make sure it's what God says. You know, thousands of people may be doing things because that's just what they've always done. Why do we worship God this way? Why do I believe this way about salvation? Why do I live my life that way? If the answer is, that's what mom and dad did, or if the answer is, that's just what we've always done, friend, that may hinder you. And that may hinder us from knowing the truth of God's Word. And so we want to be sure that we do it because God wants us to do it. Then we also mention this as a hindrance as well. If I put my faith 
in the books and the writings of uninspired men, friend, that can blind me from knowing the truth. There are two great questions that every honest seeker of truth ought to ask. The first is found in Jeremiah 37 verse 17. An evil king said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Paul repeated that, those ideas in Romans 5 verse 4 when he said, uh, What does the Scripture say? What does God's Word say? Uh, is there any guidance from God on this subject? We need not to put our faith. Too many people have got faith put in books of men, uh, traditions, uh, catechisms, uh, manuals and things like under that. Well, why do we believe this way about salvation? Well, let me get out my catechism. No, it won't work. Let me get out my manual. No, that's not going to be our judge on the final day. Those books are uninspired books of men. And friend, they're not truth. God's Word is the only source of truth. As we think about this idea, we really want to emphasize if we're going to not be hindered by the books of men, we've got to realize the Bible is the only safe and true roadmap that will get us to heaven. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? It is the power of God unto salvation. Christians are encouraged in James 1.21 to receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. We're born again by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. 1 Peter 1, verse number 23. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by Him. The Bible is the only safe and true guide that will get you to heaven. Books of men, while they may have some value, don't trust them alone. Trust the Word of God as your only source. And friend, please realize that the books of men cannot save your soul. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 34, Heaven and earth will pass away. My Word, it will never pass away. When I stand before God, what's going to be my judge? John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my Word, has that which judges him. The Word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. It's God's Word that's going to be our final guide. And so if for my faith I have to turn to books of men, then I probably need to re-examine that. And I need to ask myself, are these books of men that are uninspired hindering me from really knowing the truth? But then there's a, a final thing that we want to mention as a hindrance to the truth today, and it's a big one. Friend, if we've got a, an unhealthy attachment to this old world and Satan's allurements, it's going to keep us from really knowing the truth. James said in James 4 verse 4, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy. God said, do not love the world or the things in the world. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. If I'm so attached to this world or some practice in this world or some moral ideology in the world, that may keep me from really cutting ties and putting my trust, my wholehearted trust in God and His Word. Now let's direct our attention to some things that can help us. We looked at some hindrances, things that will get in the way from us knowing the truth, but what is it that will help me to know I know the truth? And number one, you've got to have a good and honest heart. You've got to be willing to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Paul is the great example of that in Acts chapter 9. Saul of Tarsus is living a life completely contrary to the will of God. He was there when they stoned Stephen holding their coats. He's been debating against teachers of the gospel. He's wreaking havoc on the church, dragging men and women to prison. But when confronted with the truth, how did Paul respond? Lord, what would you have me to do? Acts chapter 9, verses 4 through 6. I've got to have the humility of heart to say, just as Samuel said in 1 Samuel 2 and 3, Speak, Lord 
your servant hears. I need the attitude of Isaiah and Isaiah 6 where Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. I want that attitude and that, that spirit of, I've got a good and honest heart, no matter what God asks me to do, I'm going to do that. And you know, that's really what Jesus' mother said in a very beautiful verse in John 2 verse 5. Mary said to the servants, As Jesus is about to perform the first miracle in Cana of Galilee, Mary turns to the servants and says this, Whatever he, Jesus says to you, do it. I've got to have that good and honest heart, that good soil that receives the Word of God, takes root in it, and produces and bears fruit unto God. And so, do you have a good and honest heart? Are you really willing to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Secondly, helps that will help us, things that will help us to know the truth. A second one is, you've got to be ready to prove and test everything you hear. Now this is directly connected in some way to not believing and practicing what others tell us to do. But friend, we want to emphasize that a big help to make sure you know God's truth is to test and to prove everything you hear. And did you know that the Bible actually commands that? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. How do we know what's good if we proved it? How do you prove it? By the Word of God. Here's the practical application of what we're talking about. Somebody stands up and teaches something publicly on a religious subject, whether it's about God or about Jesus or about salvation. When we hear that, we hear it with a readiness of mind. If it's God's Word, I'm going to accept it. But friend, I'm going to prove it first. You know, I'm reminded of the example of Acts 17, verse number 11. The Bible says that the Bereans were noble than those in Thessalonica. Why? They received the Word with all readiness. And listen to this now. And they searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Friend, we beg you today, when you hear something taught, and someone says, this is God's Word, this is what the Bible says, this is what you've got to do to be saved, we beg you, check it for yourself. Make sure you can't, listen carefully, you cannot know, you know the truth until you've checked it for yourself. Or you can believe it, you can buy into it, you can be duped into thinking that, but you cannot honestly say, I am sure this is God's truth until you've seen it with your own eyes and been convicted of it. And again, this is not a bad thing. Somebody who's teaching the Bible will never mind. You will never try to discredit, will never get mad about you checking what they say. In fact, again, the Bible tells us to check the teacher, right? 1 John 4 verse 1, test the spirits to see whether they are God. Why? Many false prophets have gone out into the world. And so when someone says, you know, things that are not right, we want to check that. So let me give you some examples of things that are so plainly taught today and yet are so clearly taught against in the Bible. Let's say someone says, you know, the head of the church today is the Pope. The Pope is God's spokesman on earth today. A lot of people believe that. A lot of people have bought into that. Is that true? Have you checked that in the Bible? Where does the Bible say that the Pope is the Holy Father and that He is God's spokesman today? Well, friend, the Bible clearly teaches that's just not the case. Listen to this one verse. Matthew 23, 9. Jesus said, Call no man father. What? Call no man father? And yet we look up to, people look up to that man and they say, Holy Father, and they call Him that? Uh, who's God's spokesman today? God has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. There's God's spokesman. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says, Jesus is God's final spokesman today, and we've got the words of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And so something just plain like that is clearly taught against in Scripture. Check it for yourself. Uh, think about this as well. Someone says, you know, it's, accept it's okay today. We live in a more liberated society and it is okay today for women to preach 
and stand up and speak in a mixed assembly of both men and women. Really? Have you checked what the Bible says on that? Paul says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Let's prove it. Let's test it. Let's check and see if it's okay for a woman today to stand up and preach in a mixed assembly. 1 Timothy chapter 2, here's what the Word of God says in verse number 11 and 12. Let a woman learn in all silence with all submission. Now listen to this. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to be an authority over a man. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35. Let your women keep silent in the churches. And so here's what we've done today. We've taken a very popular doctrine, especially in our day and age today, where men will say it is perfectly fine for a woman to stand up in a mixed assembly and preach. And then we heard Paul say, by inspiration, I do not permit a woman to teach or be an authority over a man. Paul later would say in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write to you. Paul's writing, he said, these are the commands of God. You know, to make sure you know the truth, you've got to be committed to studying the Scripture for yourself. Study. Listen to these words. Study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, Search the Scriptures daily. Acts 17, verse number 11. Then you'll be able to speak as the oracles of God. Now, we say, okay, that, that's good and well, but how do you really study the Scriptures for yourself? Well, friend, let me give you a pattern on how people did that in the Bible that's a great way for us today. Acts 17, verse 11. We mentioned it earlier. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word with all readiness and searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. How do you study for yourself? Friend, there's no doubt you've got to have a readiness of mind. I've got to be open-minded enough that I'm willing, if it is God's truth, to accept it. You've got to have that readiness of heart and readiness of mind that if God says it, hey, I'm willing to do it. But you can't be blind in accepting what people say without checking it. And so, you know, we've got to be open-minded, but we also have to realize there is uh, an authority. There is a guide by which we're going to check everything, and that is the Word of God. And so we've got to have the attitude of not only saying, okay, if it's God's Word, I'm going to accept it, but first I'm going to check it. Listen to what they did again. They searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were indeed so. And so do you have that, that readiness of mind? Are you willing to show by your actions that not only do I accept that as truth, but I'm going to accept it if I first see it in the Word of God. Let me give you a, a couple of other examples, maybe to show how this is the case today. Sometimes people will say, there are teachers who will say sometimes that, you know, the Bible teaches that baptism is just an outward sign that you're already saved. People say, baptism's not essential to salvation, you're, you're, you're saved before you're baptized, you're baptized sometime later, and baptism is not essential to salvation. How do you know the truth on that? Are you sure you know God's truth on that? I've heard that a lot. I've heard a lot of people say that. It's an outward sign of an inward grace, outward sign you're already saved. Friend, did you know that's not what the Bible teaches? Did you know that the Bible teaches baptism is essential to salvation? that baptism is a part of God's commands that you must do to be saved? Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's an outward sign of an inward grace. That's man's words, not God's. Listen to what the Bible does say. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Jesus did not say he that believes will be saved. He said he that believes and is baptized will be saved. John 3, verse 5, Jesus said, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Think back to Saul of Tarsus, that man with a good and honest heart, who said in Acts chapter 9, verses 4 through 6, Lord, what would you have me to do? He was told, go in the city. It'll be told you what you must do. Saul recounts his conversion, and we find out what was essential for him. Acts 22, verse 16, a man by the name of Ananias 
brings the gospel to Saul, and he says, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. At what point are sins forgiven? Acts 2 verse 38 says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And someone says, oh, okay, okay, but the Bible never says baptism saves us. That's not true. Here's man's doctrine. Man's doctrine says baptism does not save. You know what the Bible says? 1 Peter 3.21 says baptism does now also save us. Let's look at those doctrines. Here's how we illustrate. How do you know you know the truth? Man says baptism doesn't save. Okay, I'm going to get my Bible out and see what does the Bible say about that. Baptism does now also save us. I can know the truth on that subject, but I've got to have a good and honest heart. I've got to maybe do away with some prejudice and bias. I've got to stop listening to uninspired teachings and books of men and put my trust and hope in the Word of God. And so, friend, we began with the words of Jesus. Such a beautiful statement. You can know the truth, and the truth, it will make you free. Our question to you today is, are you sure you know the truth? Are you committed to having that good and honest heart that says, whatever God's Word says, I'm going to do it? If so, are you willing to change your life and turn from the things that are wrong and turn to God, known as repentance? Luke 13, verse 3. Would you be willing to put your faith in Christ and really believe that He is the Son of God? John 8, verse 24. Would you confess His name before men? Romans 10, verse 10. And would you do what they were told to do in the first century? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Friend, our prayer and hope today is that here's all we're asking today. What we want to encourage people to do and what people in the churches of Christ believe is get your Bible. Check it for yourself. Read the scripture for yourself. The only way I can know that I'm right or wrong in the sight of God is if I see it with my own eyes. If I study it, if I search it, I can know for a fact this is what the Bible, I don't have to listen to anything else. If the Bible says it, it's true already. I believe it. I know it's true and I can know that I'm right with God. And so our hope and prayer today is that you will know, you know the truth by giving the Word of God first place in your life. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. The Gospel of Christ.